Several studies have been conducted on epidemics such as SARS or Zika and they all got to the same conclusion. Pandemics increase inequalities as they tend to impact the poor more than the richer. And the biggest impact has been found when an epidemic was followed by economic troubles. So today let's assess the impact of COVID-19. My guest is Céline Boulanger, macroeconomist at the Groof Peterkam. Céline, welcome. Um, if we look at COVID-19, it's been around for over a year now. Do we see similar patterns this time around? Yes, unfortunately, we see that this time around will be no different. So we see that it is the poor that are being hit the hardest. Um, and actually, we see that this time around may be worse. So the IMF predicts that the rise in inequality will be worse than in past crisis. Um, the, the IMF actually predicts that a decade in the fight against rising inequality will be wiped out because of the pandemic. And this is because inequality will rise within countries, which means that in Belgium, for example, the poor are being hit the hardest, but also across countries. So that means that Belgium is actually better off than less developed countries like emerging markets in Asia, Latin America or Africa. Uh, can you explain to us how this impact exactly works? How does a pandemic increase inequality? There are many different reasons. Uh, the first one is actually simply the health impacts. So we see that it is the poor that are the most vulnerable in terms of the virus itself. So they are more likely to catch the virus because they live in small confined spaces, also because they have higher rates of chronic diseases uh, and less access to healthcare. But then economically speaking, it is also the lower income households that are more likely to lose their jobs because they often work in sectors where home working is just not possible. If we look at COVID-19, inequality rises, but did rich people suffer too? No. Actually, what's ironic is that the poor are getting poorer, but the rich are actually getting richer. So the rich actually benefited from uh, the pandemic. 2020 was actually a really good year for, for the rich and the ultra rich. How come? Uh, well, there are many different reasons, but mostly because financial markets performed quite well. So we see um, people in the tech sector or sectors that are related to p the pandemic, for example, like vaccines, that, uh, that are getting a lot richer because of the pandemic. We see that the 10 richest billionaires in the world actually saw their wealth increase by, by 540 billion last year. If we compare emerging markets to developed markets, what are the differences that you see there? So we see actually that emerging markets are worse off. This may be hard to believe because we see that the consequences in our countries are huge, but actually emerging markets, not only do they have to face the pandemic, they have to do that with weaker health systems, uh, but also they have to face financial instability. For example, we see that uh, during the first wave, uh, investors panicked. What do investors do when they panic? They run to safety. So that led to huge capital outflows in emerging markets. On top of that, uh, they have to face lower remittances when uh, developed countries are in lockdowns. They, um, they have to face uh, export sectors that are suffering. Some of them rely heavily on tourism, as you can imagine. That's very bad news for those countries. Um, and then we also have commodity exporters that had to face uh, plummeting uh, global demand, so lower prices. And then finally, we also know that in terms of room for stimulus, both uh, fiscally, but also in terms of monetary stimulus, they, they have a lot less room than in, in our countries. Celine, and how about social inequalities between generations or between genders? What have we seen there? We also see a widening gap in social inequalities. Uh, in terms of generation, it might not be what we think. Um, when we look at the virus, we know that the elderly are more likely to get severe versions of the virus and, and die from it. But when it comes to the economic impacts of the pandemic, it is the young that are being hit the hardest. They're the ones that are losing their jobs, they're facing high rates of unemployment. They're the ones that are being hit by uh, schools that are closed, so lower educational attainment, and that will have major long-term consequences for the young. And then in terms of genders, it is women that are being hit the hardest. Um, they're the ones that 
are losing their jobs more often because they tend to work in sectors where working from home might not be possible, uh, but also because when schools are closed, they're the ones that have to take care of the children. Uh, that means they have less time available for work. To conclude, what do policymakers need to do in order to fight those inequalities? I think the key here is to remember that fighting rising inequality is key, not just morally speaking, but also economically speaking, because we know that rising inequalities actually hinder economic growth. So if we want the economic recovery to be the strongest and to last the longest, we should focus on fighting inequality. Uh, governments can put many policies in place. For example, any policy really that protect the most vulnerable trenches of the population, social programs like unemployment insurance, but also uh, international policy that help, for example, uh, emerging markets that are you know, in bad shape uh, through debt relief and things like that. Céline Boulanger, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you.